네, 이제 시작 녹화를 시작을 해볼게요. 네. 그 오늘 뭐할 거냐면 이제 그두 가지인데 간단하게 일단 뭐 하나를 할게요. 뭐냐면 그 우리 지난번까지는 그 2D CNC를 배웠잖아요. 여러분 2D 아, uh, so we have learned, we learned about 2D CNC. And then one of the best example is actually this kind of uh, 2.5 assembly. And then we have learned uh, how to design a very simple uh, smartphone stand. So, you, so this week's assignment is actually preparing a simple Uh, I don't know, some object. So you can actually use it for your smartphone CNC, a smartphone case. And then today what we are going to learn is actually 3D CNC. And then actually additionally, I'm a little bit explaining about some additive modeling uh, right after explaining surface modeling. So going back to uh, Rhino, uh, let's do a very simple thing about very simple surface modeling. So when you design uh, surface modeling, so let's imagine that, let's first think about some size first. Let's say we are going to design something uh, 200 millimeter and 100 millimeter, and then hide this, let's say uh, 50 millimeter box. So let's say that we are going to cut uh, this block shape first. And then, so we are kind of thinking, let's kind of think about some designs that we can cut uh, using this kind of shape. And the one of the easiest way to design is, so I'll kind of draw a surface here. Uh, And then let's say here is a surface. And then to manipulate a surface, there are many different ways. And one of the easiest way is to use the control point of a surface. So for example, uh, if you rebuild it, I just type rebuild, and then you can actually control the number of control points. And previously it has two, but now it has Now it turned out that it will have three on one axis and another three on the other axis. You can actually change that. By doing so, you probably see the changes in numbers. For example, I change three to four in terms of V and I click preview and I K. And then if I click this one, show object contour point, you probably see that now it has a one, two, three, four corner points, uh, control points. And uh, another one has still one, two, three. So let's try rebuild one more time and then select it. And then now you see that which one is, now you realize that which one is U and which one is V. So here U has number three and V has number four. Uh, so, Actually, now it has a five. So, but we will, you can actually, this one simply show that uh, what will happen. But now you probably see U and V. And then you probably think about that. Uh, you may have a question about what is U and what is V. So, I will kind of quickly explain about that. So, let's say that, um, let's say that, so now I'm talking about surface modeling. So, that, let's say that I have. Uh, let's kind of draw something uh, simple, which is rectangle. And then in this case, we can understand that this one is X axis, as we see in the screen here, and this is Y axis. And then, so this one is quite easily understandable. Then actually, if you kind of uh, uh, rebuild it, uh, uh, if you rebuild it, and enter, then this one says that, 
current is a, uh, we have number here. So now I change one is two, the other is four. And then I just click OK. And then I click this one again. And then if I click it, then that you see that a one has only two, X direction is, has only two, and Y direction has four. Uh, so, which means that going back to the original, if I rebuild it, now we understand V is four and U, U is two. Then you put, you probably think of, you may think weird that why do we need another uh, dimension or access name using U or V instead of using X and Y? Because X and Y is a kind of like a coordinate system uh, that we use so-called um, objective word or Cartesian word. And imagine that the second one is something rotated in, in any direction or here too. Then actually this surface compared to this, actually we really don't know in how we organize this surface or how to understand this surface compared to this one. Because um, the, now that the X, Y, Z coordinate of this surface is very difficult to know compared to this one. So this is a little bit less intuitive to understand it compared to this one. So then we kind of need another uh, information about axis that regardless this position in Cartesian coordinate, we kind of, we, we want to find a way that is there an easier way to control any location of a surface, regardless its position or rotation. So for example, so kind of that's where UV is coming from. So UV is dependent on a surface. And then because it's kind of like relative position or relative direction in a surface, it will maintain the same location, which is the center point is always the same in a surface, regardless its position or rotation. That's why the beauty of UV came from. So um, to manipulate that, so that's kind of, uh, we can actually understand it. And then to know the UV value is known as domain. And then this one is, Domain of U. Okay, so I actually rather make something even easier one. So you can actually recognize it more easier. So let's say that this one, if I use bounding box, then what we see is that the dimension is 11, 1, 11, and the width is 38. So we can actually, you can use this one. And then we can actually have this one. So this one shows that the width and length is 116 and 38. And if we check out the domain of this circle, it also said surface U is zero to 116, meaning that U is actually equivalent to X and V is equivalent to Y. But if we rotate this one somehow here, and then let's try copy. So then we have a new surface here. And then now still everything has been changed because the coordinate of which, let's say that coordinates are changed. However, the domain of this uh, surface is still same, meaning that if you want to add a point at the center, for example, I just draw a line from one corner to the another corner and also one corner 
to the another corner, then actually the point of the center point of this surface and the certain point of this point is actually is in very different position. However, it, if you think about in terms of domain, probably the center point of the location in terms of domain is probably half of you and half of Brie. So that's kind of where the beauty actually came from, that you can actually identify a position on a surface. And then one of the great thing about using UV is actually that if you actually use X, Y, Z coordinate, it will have three domains, three dimensions. But when you use UV, you only have two dimensions. That's the kind of beauty of uh, using this UV. So now going back to uh, this, vol uh, this volume, so I'm going to, I selected this one and I click this and actually this one has uh, control points here. And actually you can actually manipulate based on the position of using position of this control point, for example, but in this case, I want to reduce the contour point simpler. So I do, I would do three by three and update it. And then if I re-click this one, then actually this one has grid the system. And now I will use the center point and then probably I'm moving it down. And then I just, this one, I just hide it. So now you see that you actually change uh, the shape of uh, the shape of a flat surface into a curved surface. So kind of this is a way to controlling so-called surface modeling. And let's say that, and then uh, where uh, where you can use this kind of surface? For example, let's talk about Ferrari car design. Uh, then actually you probably see a lot of curved panner wrapping around the chassis of this car. And this beautiful panel is actually designed uh, using so-called this uh, control point. And let's just assume that this one is very simple surface and then the way how we can make it. So now we are going to use so-called 3D CNC. And to do that, I simply select this surface and then export selected. And then I simply save this one as 3DS and I call it test surface for now. So now all you have to do is simply just make any surface using working with control points. And then here's option is you can actually, the what happened when you export uh, this, this is called actually a nerve surface, which is very smooth and curved surface. And when this one is exported to CNC, and actually this one will be uh, converted into fragmented and triangulated surface. So if you kind of preview it, you probably see this kind of uh, some flattened surface and then kind of deformed it when you use fewer polygons, and then if you use more polygons, and if you preview that, and then you probably see more so-called uh, isocurves, which is actually some curves that defining the surface, and actually this one become more smooth. Uh, so this one is actually, uh, you need to control it by simply testing and checking their uh, surface smoothness. So I kind of, I assume for now, and then even you can actually control using this more detailed control option, such as density or angle or length. Um, you may need this one when you particularly have very complex surface, such as human body, such as um, let's say a brain 3D model. Then actually this brain has so much a creases, so many creases and a very high curved area. In that case, 
uh, you may want to test and see whether you have this kind of uh, simplification or you may want to have all the little details that your model may want to have. So that, this detail part, you can control uh, this uh, detail options. However, for now, you can simply export it uh, and then save it as as the surface. And then just, I just locate uh, the bar somewhere in the middle and then I just press okay. And then now actually you see that some kind of flat, uh, the result of flattened the surface. And now what you have to do is you have to open a VCarp Pro that we used uh, last week. Uh, and then uh, we need to check the size of it. So for example, uh, uh, the size, uh, what we used it before is actually, so let's say that I use bounding box and then the size of this bounding box is 200 and 100 and H is roughly about 36. So I would say 37 millimeters for now. Uh, and then in this brick car, I will create a new file. And then I will change the job size. Basically the job size is the size of material. So width need to be 200 and height is 100. And that the thickness is actually 37. And then G0 position is that we locate the top surface at the top and then actually zero start from there. And then here uh, we actually have this 3D view. Uh, this one only shows only top surface only for now. And then in the 2D view only it shows a two dimensional view. And now I'm going to import the 3D surface we made from Rhino. And then I go to simply file and import and import. Last time we used import vectors. However, this time I'll use import 3D model. And then I just click the test surface and open. And then now I just simply say that I just, because we know that the size of this material and then the size of the surface is identical each other. So I just simply click position and import and import. Then actually it automatically fits uh, the shape of material by itself. So this is the 3D model that we have. And then to cut out this one into 3D model, uh, we are going to use another type of tool pass. So I click this one tool pass here. And then last time actually we used profile tool pass, but this time instead of it, I actually use, I need to use two different tool paths. So the first one is 3D wrapping. And the second one is the 3D finishing. And then the, the role of 3D wrapping is simply remove or unnecessary material very quickly. And then 3D finishing, the purpose of this 3D finishing tool pass is actually make it very smooth and have a kind of finishing quality surface. So I will just use 3D wrapping. Oh, and then thickness is 37 millimeter now. So that sounds good to me. And then actually this one is actually material setting. Uh, and then when we kind of take on a, when I kind of take a look at about it, uh, actually this one is a little bit uh, shorter than the material itself. That's why it is uh, complaining about it. So this one's material surface is here. And then uh, error says model sickness exceeds um, material sickness. So meaning that actually the model is actually higher than the model. So we have to uh, manipulate a little bit. So I would change that the thickness would be actually last time the Rhinos model. Uh, we have to check, check it here. Uh, one of the reasons is that the Thickness, the kind of the depth of this surface is actually 37. However, the location of 
this surface is actually from zero to here is actually, let's see, is about uh, actually 50 millimeter. So actually we have to use this uh, material. So here I'm going back to two paths and then material thickness supposed to be 50 to be fit. Then now you see that everything is okay. And then the top surface of a material matched to the surface height of the, this kind of curved shape. So this one is ready and material set is okay. So this is done. Now we are going to start rough machining through path. And then the tool that we are going to use is actually end mid quarter inch, uh, which is actually the same thing we used last time. Uh, and then uh, we just left it like this. And then something we want to check is say G is five millimeter, meaning that we want to cut out all the material. However, we left at least five millimeter to use for finish cutting. So this is a kind of safe material to be left. And then we can just simply click calculate. Then actually this is the tool pass that you are going to see. And then if you kind of like, uh, if you kind of see how the milling motion will work, and then this will be uh, the result that you are going to see when you actually cut out the rough material out of it. Uh, and then I kind of a little bit make it faster. Speed it even faster. And then you probably see that kind of this step like shape. And then what you see the kind of this stair like height is actually the five millimeter that we set as a safe height. So this is done. And then if you check the time, this will take about an hour. So 3D CNC cutting will take actually uh, at least half a day for these little pieces, little piece. And the next time, next thing, next thing what we are going to do is we, we want to actually cut, we want to cut very smooth surface out of it. So I will, in the next process, I will click 3D finishing. And actually you have multiple choices. However, in this case, we are going to use, of course, if you use eighth inch ball nose, which is two thirty millimeter size ball nose, then you will have very nice and smooth surface. However, then it will take a long time. So let's test it. So I simply select ball nose eighth inch uh, drill bit, which is look like this. Uh, one eighth inch for nose bit. And actually you, it kind of looked like, actually it looked kind of look like this. The body, the diameter of a body is roughly a quarter inch, about six millimeter. But actually the end tip of this tool is roughly eight inch, which is two, three millimeter. But eventually, since it took so, it will take very long. What we are going to use is a quarter inch a bore nose drill bit. And actually this one has the same diameter as its body and it will be about uh, eight or quarter inch uh, uh, diameter. So let's compare that. So at first time we are going to use eight inch bowl nose and select and then if you calculate it, and I pulled this one as uh, one eighth inch. And then if you calculate it, uh, it has, it says it didn't really cut every material. However, I just kind of try that. So if I do it, then as you see that uh, this one is kind of having like this, oh, looks like, uh, I look like I use this roughing cut. So I just use a surface cut, oh, I look at surface cutting and use it. Then, oh, I actually use offset, but I, I rather use raster, which is make it smooth. 
and then calculate it, and then simulate it. Uh, this one has still not that great surface we have. How about I'm just using surface cutting and then I'll change it to quarter inch bore nose and select it. Oh, and then actually you, you can actually make it this one more fine and coarse. So I kind of change a little bit this one more smaller. And then if you simulate it, uh, let's kind of compare these two together. So this one doesn't really look bad. Uh, actually, this one I found from the last class is that uh, did, I think it is because happened because this one does not have machine connected. So kind of this error actually come from that. But once you have uh, your machine connected to this software, then you'll have a very nice surface. But the, the kind of here, uh, what we need to have is actually we need at least two, uh, I will kind of delete unnecessary here. Uh, and then all we have to do is we all need, need is uh, rough cutting and finish cutting. Then it will have, uh, it will result a very nice surface. Uh, one example, I kind of show it uh, right now. Just give me one minute. So this is the kind of one of the cutting we have. Then I don't know whether you can see this. So this is one of the examples similar to that. And then this is the kind of clean surface that a, a ball nose bit can put out. And then as you see that actually this one has a, some kind of angled surface here and on both sides and also here too. Uh, one of the reasons that we cut this one is because we are going to use a vacuum machine to make a, this kind of shape. So this one is actually one of a previous project. Uh, actually, it's a smart farm. And this middle area is actually where the sand and the moisture sensor is located. And this motor, so actually we can use a vacuum press machine to test, uh, actually to make this plastic foam using this wood. And then as we connect this water pump and then kind of moisture sensor that give automatic water supply. So basically to build a smart And so here, what we can do, so your assignment 
this wig is very big, a very simple uh, shape that we are going to use. We cut it and they use as a, a base mold for vacuum machine. And vacuum machine is actually look like this. Writing is not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's wordy. So this is actually a vacuum machine. And then this is the same manufacturer that we have. This is just slightly larger model that we have. Uh, that we are going to locate a very thin uh, acrylic material and then place a mold underneath. In this case, this one looks like a metal mold, but we are going to use wood mold. And then we heat up, we place a very thin uh, plastic sheet and then we heat up and then because it is heated then it becomes very soft and once it is heated and soft and actually we can actually press it onto the model with some vacuum suction and actually it will create a, this kind of very clean and nice mold and actually this is kind of like you probably can see almost everywhere if you go to any store or convenient store now basically you're uh, any packaging uh, material is actually made out of this kind of way. So this is something that uh, we will do maybe two, three weeks later, once our uh, uh, kind of, uh, once you can come to the school. Uh, okay, so that's kind of like, uh, I, kind of then I kind of explained uh, how to uh, prepare a CNC model. Uh, particularly uh, 3D CNC, and then we can use it for a uh, vacuum molding uh, in several weeks later. Any questions about this part? So it's very, it looks like very simple. And now uh, I kind of explain a little bit more about, so now let's take a look at about uh, this kind of, uh, let's say doing, uh, a Ferrari car panel. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, oh, then did you see the vacuum forming machine? No. Oh, okay. So sorry, there. Okay. So I will kind of show you one more time. So uh, let's go to YouTube, and then vacuum forming. Okay, so uh, this is the vacuum forming machine. So you can place, so your first step is you need to make a so-called board. So it could be metal mold or it could be wood mold. Then actually you can actually place a very, heat, a very thin heated uh, plastic, then actually you do, because it is hot and soft. So kind of, we can actually create a, this kind of a, a 3D shape mold. Uh, basically these are all the same thing. The mold, you can actually make any kind of a, uh, heat resistant material, such as you can even use clay or stone, anything that can maintain over uh, roughly about 200 Celsius. So this is just process of making it uh, of kind of like a plastic a model out of a vacuum forming machine. Okay, so now let's kind of, if you take a look at about Ferrari car design, then actually you probably see there are, uh, let's take a look at what some of my favorite, which is La Ferrari probably. Then you probably can uh, see that, uh, you can kind of now, you can see how to make this kind of panel. Of course, 
This one is metal or al aluminum sheet. So it's a little bit different, but it's a kind of same thing that uh, pressing and forming is still the same thing. In the board, in case of car door, uh, that one is actually metal press uh, manufacturing. So it's kind of like same process, simply uh, metal is uh, using a metal press, that's it. Is turning in car doors, another production one, play it slices it to the desired So they place a very thin flat metal sheet. This particular one is a trial press, which offers a better fuel for process than the one on the production one. The press forces the blank into a die, giving it the basic shape of two car doors. It's a design that's been engineered for both aerodynamics and strength. So actually this is kind of pressing and vacuum forming is actually almost everywhere uh, that any products actually, um, many products actually made out of this kind of process. And, one of, and then for in this kind of mass producing world, uh, this is kind of one, one of the most popular uh, production system. Okay, now coming back to surface modeling, uh, this one simply showed uh, how you can actually uh, manipulate the shape. Then you may kind of think about it then how to continue if you kind of want to maintain more complex process. Then actually another method is you can actually cut out this surface using so-called a split function. And I selected this surface and okay, so I just, I type split comment and select this surface. And then I kind of select this line as cutting object. Then actually this one is split it into two uh, part, and then you can actually select this control point again. Then actually you are actually, and then actually you kind of see that this control points is not many. These are not many enough to control this point. So you can actually use rebuild command, and then you can increase the control points, and then you can actually. Uh, manipulated. However, one thing I would like to explain is that this is half surface, but its control points are actually outside of box. Can you imagine why? Because actually, I told I, can't, I mentioned that when I drew a line in Castle called the CAD software. This is simply visualization and the actual data inside, inside of this software is basically start point and end point. And line is simply visualization of it. And as you see here, the actual data is actually the original surface. So that's why the control point is uh, still maintained its original control point. So in this kind of, this is a kind of case that you are going to experience quite many times. So in that case, one solution for this, and as you see here, there is a kind of gap started, meaning this one is deformed when I change the number of control point. So I just kind of undo that. So what I do before I change the density of control point, I need to recreate it. I need to recreate it as a clean surface instead of a kind of cut it or cut part. So to do that, actually, there are many uh, ways to do that. So I just kind of copy this one into multiple pieces to show many different way of recreating this one. So I deleted this one. So first way, uh, one way of easy, one easy way of doing is you select a surface 
And then you can use a silhouette function. So what the silhouette function do is it will create the edge line. So we can by using this silhouette and then by using network surface. Now in this case, actually, uh, this one have network surface can only work with three or four surfaces. So what we can do is I can cut, we can add another surface here and then split uh, this curve using this one. So by doing so, this one have one, two, we can subdivide them into four boundary um, curves. And then after doing this, I just hide these two guys. And then I will use, again, network surface for one pieces using these four curves and create this. And using this one, I created another pieces. So network surface is one way of uh, creating a new fresh surface. And as you see that if you actually from now, if you rebuild it, now that every control points are within this surface, and then we can actually reduce that. So this one, we can actually, now we, we can actually play with this. For example, I selected this one, I rebuild it, and I would rather use smaller number of control points, then coming back, then actually you can play with this kind of um, manipulation of the surface one more time. And this one, the, if I repeat the process using rebuild, you can increase or decrease the control point, the number of control point, and actually you can play with by moving the control point of it. And then now you can actually create a very interesting surface out of it. And then if I show this one again, This one is actually kind of working uh, our manipulative surface that you can see and see the, this nice one. And then this kind of by repeating this kind of cutting, splitting, rejoining, and then kind of moving control point that so you can work on this very interesting curvy like design. And I'm highly sure that uh, some of you may not be interested in this kind of design issue, however, when you even you even when you actually design a prototype of any mechanical system uh, these days are not functional world rather more emotional world where um, you may want to make your robots uh, beautifully or more emotionally than simply they do functional one and another method of working on it is actually um you, we can extract, so do you remember whether the orders of geometries, which is all geometries start from point and points can become curves or lines and lines or curves can become a surface and surfaces can become a volume. And here to manipulate the surface, the previous, previous method was we were using the control points of a surface. Here, actually, we can extract some previous dimensional information, such as curves or lines, by using this curve function. Then you can actually find a curve from object, and then you can actually ex extract ISO curves. You can extract points, curve, and wireframe. And wireframe is actually where you see this yellow line originally located here. The ISO, uh, this ISO, uh, this wireframe is actually one of the minimal number of curves that can define the original surface. So you can actually using this one and ISO curves. 
is actually you can create a curve where you think that defines uh, the characteristic of this surface. So actually you can create a lot of variation of surfaces here. Uh, these are particularly useful uh, when you use only certain part of surface and you can actually extract isocurves and then you can use loft after doing it and then actually it create and then you need to align curve which is simply aligning start and end point and then actually this is one of the surfaces that can be created out of this kind of one another way of using it is actually also you can create uh, also wireframe and then another quite uh, useful function you can use is actually called patch and if you call patch and then you can actually create the very in any surfaces you can create uh, one of the uh, original uh, surfaces out of them. So I kind of explained three different ways. One is network surface. The other one is loft using ISO curves. And the next one is actually patch. And these three functions is the more kind of most popular way of recreating surfaces out of curves. So uh, you can actually use this kind of technique for many other uh, areas. So this is known as surface modeling. And another one that I'm going to show you is so-called a solid modeling. So let's say that um, because many of you, particularly in post you are going to make uh, this kind of uh, machinery. So kind of I'm explaining how to make uh, the, all these joints like this. So uh, what is a solid modeling, which is actually that. So what we have been worked on is so-called a surface modeling, meaning that we create a base surface. And from a very simple surfaces, we actually created a complex surface uh, gradually. But rather in this solid modeling, what all we have to do is simply we start from a simple box and then we add another box and we add kind of another box or we can actually use boolean operation for example uh, like at the center of it and then we can create a kind of tube and move it back and then boolean, boolean operation mean by we can select one surface and then we can use boolean a difference and then select the one that we want to remove and actually we can create a hole here so actually we can actually build something like this or if you want to combine uh, some additional geometries on top of that uh, what you can do is you can actually simply you can use boolean union and actually you can select that and these two pieces become one piece but uh, okay so and then if you want to take out some part out of it And I just kind of move it a little bit down. And then also you can have a Boolean intersection. Then actually you can actually get the kind of common areas of two objects, such as like this. So kind of you can use this Boolean operation that you can add multiple solid objects or you can subtract solid object or you can combine them or you can find the common areas just like boolean operation uh, and actually these are actually probably one of the easy way of making it
Uh, for, so for example, I kind of show you one good example. Is actually this one. Uh, so actually, can you see this one? So actually, what is this? Is that actually this will hold actually a camera adapter? Uh, so you can actually use Boolean difference to cut out this hole here. But actually, this is kind of a tricky that we can see. We cannot simply put a camera uh, order inside of it. So what do we have to do? We are going to split it, and then actually we can make it uh, make it an assembly. And then to hold a camera holder here, a camera hand here, Alex, and then actually we can split it, and then we are going to use a bolts and screws that go to the side of it. So then actually we can use uh, this kind of side holes here. And then one kind of trick here is that it's really not actually possible to have this diameter is exactly fit the camera holder. So actually I simply add some sponges inner side of it. So kind of like a, this sponge actually hold um, the camera holder. For, for example, actually, if you want to hold a motor, then actually you can actually measure uh, the size of motor diameter and then make it this one slightly bigger than that. And then you can actually add some sponges or something flexible material inside of it and you can build it up. So this one, you probably can guess that it's, it's, it's relatively easy to make one uh, using this solid modeling technique, uh, such as uh, you can start uh, from a box. And then actually let's measure the center rather more precisely. And then we need a hole, we need a cylinder to make a camera uh, thickness and then make it a little bit bigger. And then uh, when you work on this kind of like solid modeling, modeling, I would recommend for you to make that uh, everything is, everything does not overlap each other because anyway, the Boolean operation is kind of programming operation, which is computational process. And then when a surface is overlapped, I don't know whether you feel or not. Do you see my screen? No? Please tell me that you are working. <laughs> you can see why if I miss it. Okay, so going back to a share screen one more time. Okay, I'll just repeat one more time. Okay. So let's say that we are going to design uh, this kind of object. It could be 3D printed, or if it is a metal, uh, we can actually, uh, we can CNC this uh, piece too. Okay, so when we make this one, okay, so let's say that we can make a simple box. This one is rough, uh, roughly uh, 60 millimeter by 60 millimeter. And then the height is roughly about 80. So we make a volume. So this is basically solid modeling technique. It means we keep make solid model and we, we subtract them, we add them, kind of those kind of operation. And then we kind of, so and then to make a hole inside of it, I draw a center line. And then the kind of inner hole is just slightly smaller than that, so I just kind of uh, make a cylinder using the center line of it, and then I just make it a little bit way. It's okay to way, make it bigger, and then as you see here, uh, do you see the surface is kind of strange looking? 
when two surfaces are overlapped. Uh, this means that this one has a problem with rendering these two overlapped surfaces. So, and then this problem in rendering also may happen in Boolean operation. So to avoid this, it's kind of the same thing that when you compare two numbers in computer programming, when you write a computer program, that one, let's imagine that one is 1.11111 and the other is 1.11112. When you use double data type, there will be less problem, but let's imagine that if you use two floats, and then actually you may have a problem because of this uh, precision. And then that's kind of happened here too. So always better way is to avoid this so-called boundary condition. So I just moved up so that it penetrates through this box. Then I select two Boolean, to use Boolean difference. Let's use Boolean difference and select a body and then select this cylinder. And then you have a tube here. And then if you want to cut this one half, you can actually simply draw a line from a middle line to another line. And again, I just make it way longer. And then I move it to back. So to avoid any boundary condition at the edge here. And then I select it and I using split comment and use this line as cutting object. And as you see that, these two pieces can be separated. But now, as you see that these two pieces are actually open surface, uh, this may cause a problem for 3D printing or CNC. So I use command called cap. So I just save it, uh, selected this one, and then using the command cap and enter, then you see that this one is now closed. When I check it, this one turned it to closed solid poly surface. And I'm, on the other part, I also do the same thing. So now this one's, uh, these two pieces are complete close to surface, which is very safe to use uh, for CNC machine or laser cutting machine. So now I'm locating this one back to the original position by moving command. And then now what do I need? So actually I need a space for a bolt. Uh, and then like these kind of uh, uh, if I show it, okay. I just kind of stop sharing for a minute. When you design any mechanical part, so uh, any when you assemble anything with bolt and nut, the bolt and nut may have this kind of head uh, or this kind of head or the kind of board spaces. And actually this can be used to absorb these kind of head or not space. So make it this one large. Otherwise, you may have uh, this kind of extruded shape, but I would recommend that this one may hit other part. So I would kind of design carefully to, or kind of to hide this kind of board head or not area. And this is kind of another common technique that using, make it this one a little bit open space. So you can actually join them, make it tight uh, by using another board and not here to hold it. So then uh, you can actually make uh, this space, the you can cut this corner uh, using another box. And again, I would make this one bigger and avoid any overlap the surface. And also at the same time, as you see that there's also overlap the surface here. And then here, I kind of slightly move away, but I want to move it di very precisely diagonal way. I am using shift. Time. 
I just make a slight, I just make sure that this one move precisely. So I kind of move it on X axis, maybe one millimeter and Y axis another one millimeter. So by doing so, this one will diagonally and also at the same time precisely. And to avoid this top uh, overlapping surface, I move this one on G axis one more time. So this one is actually very safe to remove the board pad and not the space. And I'm going to, over, I want to, you can, I want to make this over four sides. In that case, you can actually mirror using the center line, or you can actually use array polar. Array polar is using make multiple object, but it kind of it make it on a circular direction. So I made four object from zero to 36th angle by doing so you can make four object copied object and then by pressing enter you can actually make all four at once so now you can actually go through boolean operation so i just do boolean difference and then select the body and then kind of the outside the shape one more time but i would not do multiple object at once, because that may cause sometimes problem. It may take time, but I would do it one at a time so you can have a clear uh, edge uh, surfaces. Uh, you can do the rest of it. However, as we know that we don't really need this whole part because this one is mirrored one. I can simply uh, mirror this one later. And then for making some board area, I draw a line from one midline to another midline. And then I select this curve and then I divide by probably six. So now you have some six div equally divided points. And then here I may draw another cylinder. <coughs> Uh, and then I can draw some space for board's body and then move it back so to avoid any overlapped area. And then also I can cut this one from one point to another and then have kind of spaces for five volts. Uh, there are actually, it looks like too many. So I just left, uh, left the three of them. And also I kind of remove the space for this bolt using also Boolean operate, Boolean difference and select the bigger one and later one. But I would not them, I would not Boolean difference all of things together. I just do it one at a time to avoid any potential problem. So I have, uh, so now you see that this one, it has very nice clean uh, surface here. And uh, before do the last one, actually before we do the three of it, uh, I would mirror this cylinder and then so locate them on the other side. So now I would actually, now I will continue to Boolean difference, difference and then select it, enter and select it, enter. Oh, so select the body and Boolean difference and select the cylinder and Boolean difference, select the cylinder, Boolean difference and select cylinder, Boolean difference, select cylinder, Boolean difference and select the cylinder. So now I have this kind of pieces and then I will just meter and then place it on another way. So this one is relatively easy process to cutting it um, 
by using a solid modeling process. So solid modeling is probably the most intuitive for uh, many people. And then you can also use this one for 3D printing and CNC. Uh, so you can actually use this one for CNC too. However, you can actually cut on both sides. Uh, when we actually, when we do some surface design, there's something uh, we, I need to explain because particularly when we work on uh, this kind of uh, vacuum forming. Uh, did, you did you recognize that any something unique thing around here that uh, because we cut object with using CNC drill bit from the top view, uh, as you see that the router bit only cut from the top. So as you, this one move kind of following this path over again and again. But one thing this cannot do is so-called undercut. Uh, the undercut is kind of something look like this. So actually this area is actually that a router bit cannot touch it. So this is known as undercut. And then imagine if you actually wrap around a uh, very thin acrylic film around it, this undercut actually use it as a clip uh, for the acrylic sheet and does not allow you to take it out. Um, and so if you kind of take a look at about CNC undercut, yeah, I will. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so now coming back to my screen one more time. So this one is actually explaining the undercut. Uh, and then this is, uh, so you, uh, you to cut this kind of the negative side of it, actually you need actually five axis CNC machine. So when you design an object, uh, please consider that you cannot make this kind of shape here. So always something you can cut out is something a vertical or something this kind of positive overcutting only. And actually CNC physically, uh, three axis of CNC physically cannot make any undercut. So actually if you when you actually use a CNC mold for vacuum foaming, actually you have no problem, but there is actually still, you may, may have a problem, which is this kind of a vertical surface cause a problem. For example, um, see a vacuum forming crease. So what is a crease? So as you see here, when a flat surface deformed, deformed into a very high and vertical one, and actually this leftover material, uh, actually it kind of, uh, there's really no way to remove uh, this kind of edge situation. So to remove it, kind of this kind of uh, leftover, uh, actually, it kind of just look like exactly look like this. So when you actually design something with CNC, uh, you may want to avoid something very high or vertical or undercut. So design something that a surface, such as kind of uh, if I if we take a look at about uh, this, let's kind of take a look at about this mask. So this mask was originally flat, uh, it's flat, but when it is flat, this one needs to be prepared some material when it is all kind of cover a mouth, which is curved area. So actually uh, this crease become flat, but other areas kind of maintained it, meaning that some, any flat material, when it is deformed to three dimensional form, Actually, it kind of, it, you have to think about some margin 
or material transformation from one shape to the other. So kind of, uh, so that's why now you can think of that when you're kind of thinking about car design or let's kind of talk about this one. You probably know uh, DDP in Seoul. So this one is extremely covered building. So as of the overall form is extremely curved, but actually there's no way, uh, yeah, so, okay, so when we take a look at about this uh, DDP Dongdaemun Design Center, the overall shape is extremely curvy. However, when we take a look at about each pieces, we actually subdivide them into smaller pieces that have way smaller curvature than the overall size. So when you design something like this, or when you actually uh, look at about, this one is actually, the designer of this one is Jaha Hadid. So all her design is kind of this kind of curvy and beautiful shape and crazy. However, all her design is actually use the same technique that uh, the, the overall shape has really have very strong curvature. However, the construction of the surface is actually using the kind of sub pieces of it, basically a module of it. And another uh, similar product with another similar designer with this one is Kupmebla. And their design is also extremely crazy. However, uh, even though at the first, at the beginning of design was extremely crazy. However, when you actually take a look at about the design of actual building, you see that they are or triangulated and banded uh, kind of panel that which is subdivided panel of the building. And actually this building is called as uh, BMW Belt, uh, which is German, in English it's BMW Word, which is the inside of it is actually look, it's really kind of crazy space. However, the basic structure is actually using a kind of sub module. And this one is actually, you can do the same thing. For example, let's say that and actually they are all made of this software, Rhino. So let's say that you have this surface. And then let's say that this has uh, heavily curved, for example, like this. Then it is kind of extremely difficult to make. And the way how to make this one in real physical fabrication method so use, using this kind of uh, wire frame, and then we can extract curve, such as extract wire frame, and use this wire frame as a split cutting object. So we can do split, and then select this surface, and select this cutting object using this curve, and then do that and we can actually cut it. And each piece of it now is actually, when you take a look at one by one, this one has way a flatter surface than the original curve. And what you can do is you can actually simply move one at a time to the surface and probably rotate it and make it a little bit flat, uh, more flat way. And then now you can actually use a CNC machine to make this one uh, kind of uh, relatively easily than before. So uh, these are actually um, kind of summary of uh, 3D CNC. Uh, and then actually uh, one of the project that I have worked on 
is actually um, is this cello making. So this cello cover is made out of using CNC machine. At that time, I think this one uses a half inch, roughly one centimeter uh, router bit that actually cut out all the surfaces uh, line by line, as you see that, and then it kind of clean a very nice surface. And conventional way of using this cello is actually called carving. And cello carving is actually this kind of tedious and painful process. So actually only one master musician make, mus uh, musical instrument maker called Luthier can make, I believe, I think at least maximum one cello per month. That's why it's handmade, the cellos are so expensive because when the kind of skilled floor master carve out a cello panel, it is not really a kind of homogeneous thickness that he's making. Uh, actually, if you kind of take a look at about a cello panel curvature, um, this one is such a control line of cello, meaning that these are the same thickness, but as you see that on a sideways, but actually the, this one is actually the section line of it. And what does that mean is that their thickness are varying actually. Uh, that's why it is so difficult. And even uh, well, another difficult part is they are not symmetrical. So actually each pieces uh, actually, and then this one is actually made by so-called luthier, each piece, because they are all different thickness they have. That's why kind of all handmade cello has a kind of sound character. They are all different. So kind of, it's kind of like some analog of spilling it has. And then again, it's not symmetrical. So left side and right side are slightly different. And that's why kind of, uh, this kind of instruments are very expensive to purchase. So, um, so this week, um, uh, so this is pretty much for this week, which is uh, 3D actually CNC cutting. And then we'll spend more time actually when you actually carve out your own. Uh, but this week's assignment is again, uh, just you have one assignment, which is making a uh, smartphone stand uh, made of wood. So you may have some one, maybe at least one joint that actually, so each flat part become a 3D volume out of it. That's your minimum requirement. So you can work, uh, just can, you can actually have some hands-on experience and you can make it something fun or cute and you can make your own design. Uh, that's it. And then for this 3D CNC part, I want to make it optional because this will take a long time. So your rough cutting will take one hour and this finished cutting at least take two, three hours. So kind of, I want to, so if, but if you are, if you want to make it, you are so welcome to make it like this kind of Kirby uh, CNC. And actually, if you take a look at about many wood CNC, uh, you will actually have a lot of, you can actually have a lot of fun project. And one of my favorite project is actually a uh, wood uh, 이게 어, 한국말로는 상감인데 영어로는 뭔지 모르겠네 
So this one is known as a sangam, uh, wood inlay. Okay, so I got it. Inlay is making. So inlay is combining just like this. So make a wood because you are using CNC. You can simply you can actually. So if you if let's say that um, when you have a something. So let's say that um, let's use a kind of cylinder. One of the inlay is actually one of the most difficult technique uh, historically. So let's say that uh, this is the inlay of wood. And then you can use Boolean different. Okay, so let's kind of copy this one first. And then you can make some negative shape. And then let's say that you have a white wood, something, let's say that white wood, and then you have some white wood, and that, could, that can create a so-called inlay like this. And then you, by using CNC, you can actually make this kind of almost precisely made negative and positive shape very easily. However, in traditionally, this is the one of the most beautiful at the same time, kind of very difficult technique if you do it manually because it's so difficult to make almost identical negative positive and negative copy together is actually very you need a lot of skill sets to create it but now uh this one is actually very easy to make these days even make it so precise and make it so beautifully and then the kind of even uh, even um it used to be very difficult long time ago is actually you can actually combine wood and metal inlay and then you can actually work it together and then you can create a really beautiful pattern out of it uh, because uh, you can actually make even metal using cnc uh, make it so delicately. Okay, so uh, that's it. That's it pretty much today, but we are going to spend more time. We actually we need to spend more time. Actually, we cut CNC and then we probably um, we can use uh, your class time for uh, when you actually making one. Uh, any questions so far? And then next week, now we are going to start a PCB design. So we actually use, so, so the CNC machine that we are going to use for wood making is actually, we are going to use Shakpa CNC, which is this one. So this one is actually um, kind of specifically designed for wood CNC and some soft material. It's really good to cut something really big. However, uh, of course, its precision is still good, but we are going to use something even more precise, uh, more precise CNC, which is called this one. And what we are going to do is actually, we are going to cut PCB, uh, so-called, we are going to make a PCB panel. So from next week, uh, we will work on uh, actually be a PCB design. PCB de design means uh, we are going to make our own Arduino. So actually, we, uh, the next week what we are going to make is PCB Arduino project. So instead of purchasing Arduino they can buy, we actually make our own PCBs and then cut out it and then we will build it up. So it'll be fun from the, we will have more fun next week.
And then we also learn about microcontroller programming too. All right, so any questions so far? I have a question. Yes. Actually, you explained two uh, process. I mean, uh, solid design and surface design. And uh, I, I personally, I think uh, solid design is um, straightforward than actually uh, surface design. So actually, uh, why we use uh, surface design? Is it actually depend on the, the manufacturing process? Uh, yeah, it, it really depends on the project. So uh, imagine, So there are many different types of modeling. Uh, yes, I will, uh, I am searching for that. Uh, oh, okay, so, uh, so it depends on where you are. <laughs> What it means is, okay, let's imagine that you are going to make a CNC machine. Or just hypothetically imagine, okay, uh, uh, okay, so do it by 3D printer. So let's imagine that you are going to make your own 3D printer. And yes, makes sense. Solid modeling makes sense. But imagine that you are a sculpture, or we'll just imagine that you are going to make a jury. Um, solid modeling does not really work with jury design and jury fabricating. It's uh, actually this one work with uh, even surface modeling doesn't really work with this. Uh, in this case, you uh, people need wired frame modeling. So wire frame modeling understand that it's a structure made out of wires or like this kind of thing um mit sculpture uh, do you know this project uh, so imagine that what is a good way to model this one surface design yeah actually yes so it has it surface design works with this one or how about this one uh, bamboo what is the best way to model this one? Or, or, or this one? I think surface design is better than solid. Actually, this one works with wireframe model. So it is made of actually out of uh, wires actually. So uh, what I mean by is that um, there is a reason why there are many different types of modeling techniques. Because uh, it will be very difficult to understand. Imagine that how can you calculate, so imagine that manufacturing also include the calculation of materials. How can you then, with, then it's, it's almost impossible to calculate how many bamboo you may need with solid modeling. Actually, in solid modeling, there's only way to use solid modeling is to simply uh, approximation, meaning that, okay, so certain volume of box may use, I don't know, maybe 10 meter of bamboo. It's kind of such kind of approximation is only available. But if you actually build this kind of model with wireframe model, you may know exact length of each pieces and exact amount of it. So uh, every modeling have different, have reasons to be used in that way. So just select one uh, when you make or build something your own and And probably, and then actually, uh, there are some cases actually that 
what really happened is that uh, let's see that uh, human sculpture art what do you think what kind of when a sculpture designed this kind of human figure how do you guess that this sculpture uses it? it does a sculpture use a solid modeling or wireframe modeling or solid solid or surface or wireframe modeling definitely solid modeling because the way how uh, okay let's say that a stone okay so like michelangelo So the way how he perceived this human figure and the way he made this figure is he start from a massive solid block of stone and then he carve out. So basically this one is actually solid model. Uh, but for the same issue, uh, wire frame model human. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this one is wireframe model. And then, uh, what else? Uh, human figure control. Uh, You may, oh, and then, oh, and then uh, there's another one. Even this is kind of new perception of, let's say that, have you ever seen voxel? Human figure. So voxel is volumetric cell that understand that human figure is made out of, I don't know, uh, sand or something. And also, if you see the human anatomy exhibition, this one doesn't mean that, that the person who made it sees the human as a solid modeling or wireframing or surface modeling. If he just see, human figure as the nature of human beings in terms of muscle, in terms of bones, in terms of vessels. So what I'm saying is that it's us who actually decide in which perspective he will see, and then the perspective will basically decide how a model is represented. Uh, so that's the kind of thing. So uh, it's not really one is better than the other, or which one is inferior or which one is advantageous or superior or inferior, advantageous or disadvantageous. So it's just uh, focus on what you want to make and wisely select the model that best represent to make that model. It's just the key. Right. May I ask yes. another question? Okay, yes. You mentioned actually uh, solid design, surface design, and wire design. Is there dot design? I mean point design. So oh, yeah, actually, a lot yeah. of points. Uh, actually, box cell is the extension of point design. For example, so yes, so if you see uh, this one, uh, this one, so I kind of understand that the whole word as point is actually this one, BMW kinetic sculpture so this one sees the word in form of point and then uh, this one simply represents that that the the order of geometries so it everything starts from point which kind of when they are randomly organized it just represent just randomness in space. However, 
when they are kind of sequence sequentially aggregated to create a some kind of global pattern then actually it create a certain shape such as car So this is kind of like show the perception of a car in form of point. And BMW actually made a lot of interesting thing. And do you know this project to BMW skin concept car? So this one really see a car really from a perspective from a surface and not the solid the surface, but soft surface. So Gina is a new conceptual project by BMW then they see a car, they're really focusing on the surface and even think about a kind of soft or kinetic surface. And that the opening of a car, the opening of the door is really amazing. Let's see. So this is how a car open its door. And actually kind of like the body is shifted by the, one of the uh, kind of structural, uh, wireframe inside of it. And actually it's a uh, door is really interesting. <laughs> it, it, it just showed the, how the chair is deformed into fit into a driver. And then one of the best part is it's lighting. Uh, this is how uh, the car's main hood is opening. And its front light is uh, one of the best parts for me. So it's just open like our eyes are open. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much that's it. Okay, so um, uh, I, I guess so this one goes back to another ARBR class that uh, what really innovate the result, the cause, the cause of it is not really, actually, so um, the manufacturing process itself actually create an innovative product, okay, that is one thing. But actually behind the innovative manufacturing process, 
the underlying key thing is actually the conceptual changes of seeing the object and how it is composed of this. Okay, so pretty much that's it. Next, uh, any more question? Further question? So, so uh, I'll leave that in my lab. I always uh, stressing is the conceptual part. When you think in a new way, then the result can be new. Okay, so that's the thing. Then, 혹시 유성분 뭐 질문 있어요? 네, 오케이. 네, 그럼 오늘 수업 여기까지입니다. 네, 수고 많이